What happens when I take my unbeaten behemoth of a rescue ace deck and ship it to my local game ground for another spin against some of the feistiest players of the German UBO underground? Maybe not what you think. And with that, welcome back to Skip Turn YGO. I'm your host Marvin and today we are having a look at my latest try to go on and claim victory once again at my locals. I will quickly go over three of the four rounds and one game will be shown in a bit more detail, which is game three and was a real highlight. So stay tuned for that. As teased, I played Rescue Ace again and it was one to one the same list I did the deck profile about. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out right after you're done with this one. At this point, a huge shout out to Spielfilm Musik, the best OTS store in Berlin. If you are ever in the area and try to get it on on Friday for a nice bit of Yu-Gi-Oh action, this is definitely the place to go. But let's talk no further and jump into game number one. Game number one, best of three rules and as it turns out my opponent is on Rika Trap Tricks Therion. This variant, I've seen this around more and more I have to say. I win the die roll and go first and completely brick. As you can see, I drew an assortment of my cross out targets in combination with cross out and one impulse. I summon the impulse in the hope to draw out a shifter if he's on any deck like that, but obviously this hand is absolute trash. With a total of like 16 one card starters, this is pretty uncommon I have to say. And I think we all understand that this game state doesn't really get better as he gets to build his board. I am able to resolve impulse to get our fire engine and hydran, but it's just not enough and we go into game number two of the series with a big line in our heart. Game two, we open the floor again, and what the hell is this? Yeah. Two turbulence, two droplets, and a Diabell star. At least one starter. Well, that sucked. Set one droplet and pass. I get to resolve the nice effect of Diabell star to get her back during my opponent's turn, but I am faced by too much. I get a full board and no way to play, so I concede my first loss with this rescue ace list, drawing abysmally twice. All props to my opponent though, interesting deck choice which completely caught me off guard. Going into match number two, I was a bit down on myself but I still believed in my cards, still hoped that this was just some weird turn of events that wouldn't repeat itself and this time my hand is superb. I get to play in every way I want to against what I should have known based on the person I was playing against. I go for a full Diabellstar line, discarding the quick spell which leads into a full Ibli combo. I end up with every rescue ace back row set, unless there's a duster in the hand of him or he's simply on flunder, I should have this wrapped up. And my opponent is on monarchs. Funnily enough, it's not that great against ace because I can do a lot from my main deck as well. We trade interactions and he shows me race off, playing a Kashtira package amongst the mix. Very unique, I have to say. As it is with monarchs, he gets to tribute my cards as well, so Ibli is gone, but at least the Kashtira part of the deck was gone as well. After some try though, he just scoops as there's just too much for me to do and he just can't get into the game at all. Game 2, he lets me go first, which I wasn't expecting at all. Thankfully, I only sided in the Cosmics and have another banger hand. I mismanaged my resources a bit and I sided out Ibli going second, but an SP full back row line seems good enough, hopefully. He has Lightning Storm, which made me afraid for a hot second. Getting rid of all my back row, I have limited interactions, but now the book from Preventer at least, the Banish of SP and the Pop from Turbulence, which will hopefully let me survive without taking any real damage and I have so much follow-up it's ridiculous. He probably has no interactions anymore so I go full all in for an OTK line with access code and turbulence which does net me the win and puts me at 1-1. I feel like myself again, like match 1 never happened. Going into round 3, I am confident this will turn around. I could have never predicted the state of my play in round 3, I just have to show you for your own eyes to believe it. And keep in mind, I did play Yu-Gi-Oh before, I did do well with this deck before, so please don't judge me. Okay, welcome to game 3. It will be really insane, I promise you. I go up against Punk. He summons Fenrir, searches another Fenrir. I have no interactions in my hand in his turn. I'm already a bit afraid at this point. Um, uh, this guy's known as a very good player where I play. Um, he normal summons Sharakuzai and just goes into Baron. I know this is not going to plan for him. And I do have a tactics in hand. He goes Baron set one pass. So I draw for turn um, and then I have multiple ways to play. 
uh, got the draw. I, I'm actually happy I didn't draw it before because I would have drawled on the Fenrir search, which would have not done anything. I summon the witch, discarding the Ibli. He barones the effect of the, the witch, which hurts me more than I want to admit. Because I go for tactics into his hand. I should have probably drawn, uh, knowing uh, hindsight. And so I look into, the, into his hand. I shuffle back the uh, ogre. Normal summon the airlifter, airlifter effect. I know that there's something set. I, if it's an imperm, I'm pretty cooked here. So I should have probably drawn... Um, and I get the emergency. This is an emergency situation as well, so fitting card in that. And I activate the emergency. He lets that go through. I bring out the hydrant, tributing the airlifter, and before I can do anything, he goes econ, tribute, baron, take, hydrant. Not the best turn from him, e from him either. But uh, yeah, there's not much I can do anymore, so I just pass with an with a hydrant on field, and as I know, he has a Nibiru and a Fenrir in hand. He specials the Fenrir, searching for another Fenrir, and at this point, it's pretty dependent on what he top decked. He goes battle face, banishes the hydrant face down, and hits me for twenty four four hundred, summons Psy Beast and goes into an SP Little Knight. The brokenest card in this game, I think. It's, it's just game-definingly good. I redraw the emergency, and I'm in a bit of a hassle here because I only have pretty much two ways to play this. The first one is this, special the Diabell Star, discarding the Droll. Um, so I know I'm never going to see an actual play here um, that results in me OTKing, so I just go battle phase to run over the SP so it, so my witch doesn't get banished, and then I just have to pass with one card in hand, praying, and it is the, I mean, <laughs> one of the best top decks available for the, for the deck. He goes into a, a combo with Deer Node and everything, uh, brings out the Syncro, which is very strong, by the way, also have a grave effect that, um, has a grave effect that will come up later. I'll, I can spoil her this much. There's like back and forth comboing. He tells me what he's going to do. But in the end, it's just too much. I know I'll never see play in this game again. So uh, it's 1-0 for him. And I go first for game number two. I have a pretty solid hand for game number two. Reinforce, Imperm, Double Diabell Star, and a Cross Out. So I'm feeling good at this point. I'm starting with the same play as before. Uh, specialing the Diabell Star, uh, thinking on what to discard, I'll take the Reinforce, activate the effect of the Diabell Star, he's fine with that, setting the Snake Eyes, Sinful Spoils, which uh, I'll activate right away, it's just standard combo stuff, and he goes for an Ash Blossom. Thank God I play Cross Out, because yeah, that's very helpful in this situation. Actually getting rid of that and helping me to play. Not worrying about Ash Blossom anymore in this combo is also very nice. Bringing out the Hydrant, Hydrant effect. Obviously not on Summon, but he is uh, aware of that. Brings out the Airlifter, which um, we'll see play in a second. I'll go normal Airlifter, Airlifter effect to uh, grab another quick spell or grab another spell which will be the emergency. <laughs> it's a pretty standard line at this point. We've seen it a thousand times. It happens so consistently. There's just no reason not to do this. This brings out the big boy. Now I'm actually in a very, very comfortable situation. I'm, even, I'm, um, I'm actually thinking about Ibli locking him at this point. I'm going uh, emergency set reinforce just to be sure not to get ogred because I know that he's on ogre. But in doing so, I I knew what he was on. Uh, I activate the effect of turbulence setting four. I actually know what he's on and I'm just completely blanking here because alert allows me to search for preventer, which would have been full combo if it went through. But I saw the ogre in game one, but I also saw another card in game one. You may also remember from 
me showing him his hand and he thinks on summon I know that this pretty much can only mean one good thing or one bad thing for one of us it is the rock yeah <laughs> I'm pretty pissed at that point I still have the preventer effect at least to uh, resummon my airlifter um, I'm thinking about how to get to SP which is Hita, Hita, Target, Ash, and then with these two go into SP so I can banish the Nibiru. Yeah, uh, I set another Imperm, so it, it should be fine at this point. I have like many points of interaction in his draw phase, I'm thinking. Uh, I know that he's on E-Tally, as every punk player should, uh, and to react to that at all, I have to get the Hydrant out before. Because what I completely miss, I, I just I just don't know anymore, is that punks aren't on summon, <laughs> and I should have I should have won the game on the spot, uh, but yeah he goes Zia mean effect probably because I didn't say anything I didn't declare an open game state or anything, I go contain on the effect of Zia mean, which allows him to react to it. And uh, yeah, we see another card from game one right here, which is the enemy controller. It's just a perfect draw at this point. He takes the SP. I'm not aware. I'm still not aware. This card is not on summon. He goes uh, mud. He goes wagon. I think that is. I go imperm target, and yeah, <laughs> I didn't know she had an effect when being targeted. Um, I was just very underprepared for the matchup again and um, just because time was already running low, game one took a lot of time, I explained a lot of things, um, I just didn't ask. So yeah, <laughs> not knowing that these are, uh, <laughs> that these are t uh, not on summon, I blank pretty often. I go reinforce here to protect my hydrant, so um, yeah, he's not banished by any uh, by any sp effect he goes gold pride continuous searching leon uh, which is just further combo i think the gold pride cards were exceptionally well at the uh, worked exceptionally well at one point but fell off a bit he goes leon target deer note and i go contain target leon Um, just to prevent him from going into any synchro plays of his own. It was probably the right decision at this point. Um, Taken away his options. He goes Deer Note. Uh, no, 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 it's it's not Deer Note. It's this uh, baller guy. And yeah, um, during the battle phase, I now almost uh, also lose my Hydrant. Um, thankfully, I do have some uh, backup in the grave and... Uh, yeah, my card in hand is still a Diabell Star card. Nevertheless, the situation is less than optimal. I should have already won this. If uh, Zeamin would have been extinguished and spellbound, there was no way for him to play. I go first action reinforce to set the rescue, drawing out something maybe, hopefully. I redrew uh, anti-spell, which is always great. Summon the Diabell Star Act effect. He goes chain SP. I go uh, set the quick spell. I could have probably just ran over the uh, SP. That would have maybe been better at this point. I have the rescue, so I feel uh, I, I feel a bit safer at this point uh, that I uh, that I at least won't uh, die. He goes first action summon the psy guy. Go into a synchro of his own the first real synchro of this game uh in in the punk combo i'm thinking i'm thinking i'm thinking he wants to remove the diabell star i go chain rescue which is actually the best play of this game and the only good play i, I think i've did because i know he's gonna remove a card in this chain i'm going turbulence on field so now two effects of mine trigger first is turbulence to pop a card and second would be the diabell star to resummon itself after discarding a card and uh, after some back and forth he searches for ogre which will come in very clutch now i go turbulence to pop diabell start to resummon and obviously you know i need to discard which my opponent tells me again 
Um, on summon, I even get to set the um, the quick spell again. I feel good. I feel great. Um, now it would just help for me to remember that Turbulence has multiple effects. He's not just a body on field. He goes set one. Um, I go draw for turn. I draw drool. Uh, no, I, I don't draw drool. Um, uh, yeah, I draw drool and then I go um, effect to draw off of Sinful Spoils. I draw HQ, activate the effect, and I completely blank that he is Ogre. And now I should have gone Turbulence effect, which I just forget as well again. <laughs> Now I'm in a bit of a panic mode. I just make a decision. He goes for a perfect combination, which is SP to banish both and then Imperm to negate Turbulence. <laughs> so I'm there with nothing. I should have just gone for Turbulence effect right away. Would have still been Impermed. Um, but yeah, I'm, I forgot the battle phase as well. I, it's just an all out disaster. He goes, set one, pass. I try to go battle phase. It's Econ again. He tributes SP, gets the Turbulence, and yeah, I just pass without activating Turbulence again after setting a card of my own. Um, this is turning into a nightmare for me. He top decks nothing, goes into set one. I go into battle phase. I should have just gone for an emergency OTK, which would have been very easy. He's on like 1000 life at this point. Main phase 2, I finally remember that Turbulence has the effect to set, but I redraw emer I redrew Emergency earlier, so now it's actually just... It doesn't matter. I gave my opponent so many chances, and it, and it had to happen. He top decks Emergency Teleport, summons Z, I mean. I even, for once again, forget that they're not, like, on summon. I tried to target Z, I mean, in the grave, which triggers his Synchro to Reborn. <laughs> Yeah, it just keeps getting worse for me. He goes Psy and Punisher, which, well, yeah, uh, at this point I know what this means. He's not there to OTK me, but he will bring me down to less life points than he has. And we're also, like, very close to timeout at this point. So, yeah, Punisher effect. Um, <laughs> also counting my stars now as he goes into the battle phase. Uh, calculating a bit. Running over the Diabell Star, I'm already like crying at this point. Missing so many interactions. Just playing really sloppy. I top deck Rhoda, but it's all over. And we're discussing a bit afterwards, but yeah, there's nothing he could have done. Nothing I could have done in my state of mind. Yeah, really abysmal. Coming out of this intense game, I felt really exhausted and my last round just mirrored the whole day for me. Nothing was going well, I was doing so many misplays and my opponent lets me go first again after I lose the die roll, which is never a good sign. I do manage to get out full Ibli with back row again. This really makes me feel quite good, but then... Going into game two, I go first again, drawing even better this time, as I'm pretty sure it is some Grand Maju deck. I side an anti-spell, so I prevent getting dusted and forcing the droplet early if it happens. I do manage to make him pass on four and Ibli, but there is... <laughs> which is messing with me a lot, or at least with a playline I had in mind. Also, the Ibli is beat cop protected, which does make it easy for me to OTK at all. I do manage to find a line to Unicorn and Preventer in the following turn, Preventer is on 4-5 because of Reinforce. I go into battle phase and he Gizmic Oroshis. And I plainly just forget about this card. Tough luck. He draws 20 cards and leaves me with nothing. So I lose this match as well after the worst gameplay of the evening from my side. It was just so frustrating. I hope you enjoyed this bit of insight into my locals journey. I think it is very important for me to show you games and days where I just don't feel like myself making a lot of mistakes. And maybe you have seen things that you've done wrong in the past as well and just learn from them. I'll take my cam with me again and hopefully show you one of those banger weeks I keep having just to contrast that awful, awful locals tournament. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Cheerio.